What's up guys, this is Double A Vapes, and today we're going to be doing a review on the Orchid RTA. So, I'm going to show y'all how it vapes real quick, and then uh, get into the close-ups, build this motherfucker, and we'll get going. Alright guys, so we're coming down to the close-up. Here's the box it comes in. I don't know, this is one sec. Nothing on the bottom. Nice purple dealio there. Pop this open. Here's what it comes with. Um, this screwdriver right here was originally in this pouch. Got uh, extra O-rings and screws. I already used one of the screws because one of them had already stripped out. I don't know where the other one is. I think I may have actually put it back in there on accident, but... Yeah, so we're going to just kind of set this over to the side here. Alright. Now, also comes with little, um, what's the wire wicking material, and then you got, it came with like, pretty sure it was 32 gauge, maybe 34 in there, it was super tiny wire. So I just tossed that, didn't even worry about it. So here's the atomizer straight out of the box. Um, it's up here for you guys to see. It's got a bunch of different levels in it, different O-rings. Um, there's the bottom of it. It is vacuum sealed. There's nothing on the bottom. You have the uh, adjustable pin for the 510. Phillips head on the uh, vacuum seal, which is where you're supposed to fill it, but I don't do that. And then there's that. Inside the box is the drip tip. It's clear as well. Grab this, pop that out of there. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get out of the box. So we're going to set the box aside, don't got to worry about that anymore. And then, oh, there's something from inside. There's a little bit of red felt inside there from the box. <laughs> Anyways, let's take the 510. Right on there, you got to kind of twist as you put it in. There you go. Alright, so we're going to kind of show how this breaks apart. So you have... 510 here, this top cap comes off of there, all of these, um, the way that these screw in are all plastic, so scared that may be a little bit easy to strip out there, but oh well, and this little piece right here comes off, you can flip it either way, it's interchangeable this way, or this way so there's that and then we got some middle piece right here it's got two o-rings on it again this one is interchangeable you can flip it either way you don't have to worry about it I mean this is obvious this goes up this is obvious this goes up so these two middle sections which you couldn't really tell which way they go they're interchangeable um, this bottom plastic does not come off it's Connected into the metal piece right here. So you have the metal at the bottom. There's your air hole. Air hole. And then chimney. Screws off of here. And that is metal. You can see in here the, um, the, uh, threads are very small you have a lot of them and then there's a little design on the front of that and then there is your deck and it's made by the same people that made the plume veil so you have the um, double uh, positive post you have two holes there just like the plume veil and that's how it breaks down so what we're gonna do is Go ahead and scoot all this aside. Build this sucker. Alright, so. I use this screwdriver. Same size as this. As this one. But I don't like how tiny that is. It's hard to get these screws down and stuff. So I use this one. Same size. Still works. Whatever. I'm going to take some 24 gauge wire. And the rest of that Japanese cotton I got right here. Move these over to the side for a minute. Actually, we're going to need this. Along with these scissors. And my juice. Juice over there. 
Alright, so it's going to pry this up here. Go ahead and unravel some wire. We'll go ahead and tuck it right here. Cut that off. And then we'll push this down in there. Keep that from coming undone. So stick the wire back in there. Now we got about a foot. And we'll go ahead and cut this in half. Alright, so we have two pieces of about five inch canthal. Alright, now this screwdriver is, I believe, similar to a 564 steel bit, maybe a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap that around here. I'm going to do. Uh, let's see, it was running at 0.2 ohms, 5 wraps, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it at 8. What is that there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So... There is the coil, little focus here. Eight wraps, I believe. One, two, three, four. Yep, eight wraps. Just gonna go ahead and push that up again. So what I like to do to push it against the screwdriver is I'll take my uh, pliers, squeeze them against this, and then push it up against there. And as you can see there, that pushes it up there. There's a little bit of a gap, but it's all right. So. Gonna kind of straighten that out there a little bit. Snip off these extra pieces. Whoopsie daisy. All right. So there's one. It's kind of janky, but whatever. Got the same one. Got the other one the same way. Eight reps. Three, four. Five, six, seven, and eight. Whoop. Okay, so again, we're going to take this tweezers, push it up against that there, try to close it off just a little bit. The, um, did the five wraps before, as I said, and it was a 0.23 ohms. A little bit too small for me. Um, I believe eight wraps comes out to, around this, comes out to about, oh, I think it's 0.45 ohms, which is plenty good for me. That's about where I like it, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So, yeah, the... Two identical uh, coils here. So we're just going to take this and you want to put it in just like the plume veil in one and three and two and four. So you're going to cross over the other middle hole whenever you stick these in here. So let me insert these real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So as you see here, you want to put this um, the middle one into that right hole and not into the one. You want to leave the center one open and you're going to do cross over the other ones over here. Take the screwdriver, push it in just a little bit about where I need it. And going to leave a little bit of extra room to move it over that air hole there. Nice thing about having the plume veil type holes is you can tighten them down 
right once you get the wires in you don't have to wait for to put your other coil in so you can tighten down the center one you just tighten it down whenever you get it so that's right there take the screwdriver here and you want to position it directly over that air hole if I can get that screwdriver over this little lip here I have to use a smaller one just for the time being to get it in there so you're going to want that to go as much over that air hole as possible go ahead and squeeze this down as well right quick so let's see stick this on here okay so take this push it over lift it up just a little bit make sure it clears the um, edge there because you do not want this thing to short out against the chimney or against the posts either so so if you can see there it is pretty well covering that air hole right there and then you go ahead and snip your wires if these scissors will cut them I don't know actually we're gonna have my clippers in here I believe yep thank God for clippers right just gonna well, that went all the way across the kitchen so that's cool so we're gonna clip the leads and there's what you're left with just over that air hole and I'm gonna go ahead and pause this and do the same thing to the other side alright so got these both pretty equally lined up from the side same height everything um, I'm just do a little minor adjustments on the angle of that one that one's good so we're gonna go ahead and fire it and then we'll uh, tighten these down just a little bit move this one tad bit out from the center I think the other one's good Another thing you want to keep in mind is you're definitely going to want to um, uh, oh dang. tighten these screws down all the way whenever you do it because all right, going from the center. But yeah, you're going to want to tighten the screws down because if you don't get them all the way down, especially on the center post here, you can see that they are flush almost with that, and that's because. Whoop, burnt myself a little bit there. These will move around if you do not get them tightened down the way they need to be. So, it's looking good here, I believe. Yep, inside out. So, go ahead and just blow on that. With this, what I do is I take an or piece of organic cotton or cotton ball, whatever. Cut it to about that thickness, about, I don't know, three millimeters maybe. And then I take the organic cotton and I actually cut it in half. Reason being is because you don't need it too long to do this. So go ahead and roll one end. Wake it through. You get it about halfway through, go ahead and just un unroll that there. And then you do not need a whole lot. That's why I cut it really short so I can use about half the cotton as I normally would. So, I mean, you're going to want these things tiny. Not tiny, tiny. But it's going to want to look kind of like a bow tie. I mean, a small bow tie. Get your juice. If I can get my juice. Squeeze a little bit on the ends here. 
saturate it so you can work with it. Okay, now how you're going to do this is you're going to take it, tuck it under like you would an RDA or whatever. Make sure you leave that air hole underneath there open. You want that to come straight up onto the coil. And then you're going to want a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit of the um, of the cotton to come down into that channel right there. You can see how it kind of comes down into this channel. The cotton there, you want it to run down the channel just a little bit because you don't, then you're not going to get that juice flowing up in there and you're going to get more dry hits. I've heard a lot of people say don't do that, don't get it in that channel, but I mean if you don't, you're kind of screwed, so you're going to be getting dry hits galore and as I'll show you guys later, this thing already has a dry hit problem anyways. So, if you can get just a little bit down in there, it's going to be way better for you in the long run. You want it kind of going down, Let's see if I can, if you guys can see that at all. Um, the wick, sorry my phone's kind of shitty, but if you can see down there, the wick is almost touching the bottom of that deck there. That's what you want it to do, so as soon as the juice flows in it can go straight up in there and then we'll just saturate this a little bit more there you go that one's done so again do the same thing to the other side and once I get that done I'll show you guys how to put it back together alright so I got this thing wicked I'll just kinda of fire it for a second for you guys alright there you go okay so you're gonna take this piece with the double o-ring Oh, first off, you want to do the chimney. My bad. Take the chimney, just stick it right on over. And start turning. You may get a little bit of cotton down in there that's going to kind of fuck up. But if it's running down those channels, you should be good. Take the double, the one with the double O-ring. Whoop, line it up first. And then screw that back on. Get it tightened down. Get the... Regular one right here, just plain plastic piece here. There's something on the inside of it though. I'm gonna get that off right quick. All right, tighten that one down. And then take your top cap here, with the drip tip spot. Tighten that one down. Then take your drip tip, twist and put it in. All right, now. The way you're technically supposed to fill these is you're supposed to go into the bottom of this here, fill it from that screw. But that's the thing is, is that that keeps the uh, that keeps the vacuum seal going. So what I normally do is I'll grab it by this center piece here, twist off that top cap area. And I'll fill it just like this. As long as you don't get it in this little center hole, you're good. You can get it on that middle right there. But you're going to want to drip it down in there. Down to the side, and you'll see it filling up here in just a second. There you go. Let it run down just like that. And I believe you can go as high as the top of this because that metal piece is not going to get anything. So we're just going to go ahead and do that just to make sure I'm correct here because I'll know if I'm not. And if not, I'll tell you guys because I'm going to be fucking sucking in straight juice. So as long as you don't get to the top of this thing, which actually is slightly above that. So as long as you fill that up there, you're good. Leave a little bit of space for the uh, threads to go in which I did and then you just get right in there now 
All right, guys. So now that we got all that done, let me go ahead and vape this sucker and show you how well it vapes. And just on a side note, my phone hit low battery right as I said, "Let's go back up top and vape it." So I hit that timing perfectly. But as soon as that filled up with the juice, the juice. So we're gonna go ahead and vape this. Good vapor. Good vapor production. Great flavor. Um, for some reason it is getting a little bit of vapor up right here. If you can see that white there. The screen's kind of bright. Sorry about that, but... Not getting any dry head problems. Now, on to the actual review. <clears throat> Normally you will get some dry hits just because it is a tank. Dry hits happen more than in a dripper because in a dripper you're controlling it. Tank it's only feeding in or an RTA or whatever. It's only feeding in as fast as the wick can suck it up to the coils. So, um... You may get some dry hits, but it's not too big of a deal, especially now that I got the wicks stuffed all the way down. It should be able to suck it right up there, no problem. But, um, yeah, this is a great RTA. Um, got it at my vape shop for $30. Bucks. Um, I've seen it 25 at another vape shop, but I just picked it up there because I was already there. Probably spent 5 bucks on gas anyways. Um... Yeah, great vapor, really good flavor. Um, again, four milliliter capacity. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's great. It uh, for thirty bucks. I mean, it's a great RTA. I mean, you could be spending, I mean, sixty, seventy bucks on a freaking Kanger sub tank. Yeah, this doesn't have adjustable airflow, but I mean. That was my full inhale, so let's do this. <sighs> Sorry. I do that sometimes when I take big hits. I swallow a little bit. I stop and swallow, and then I continue exhaling. The throat hit is really good on this juice. That's why. But, um, yeah, I mean, I have no airflow problems at all. I mean, I can, this is just as good as my dripper three quarters open or halfway open or whatever, which is normally what I run at anyway. So for me, for someone that doesn't need adjustable airflow, who's someone that doesn't need to go all the way open, it's a great, great RTA, um, <clears throat> especially for the price. You cannot beat it. Um. Uh, Pretty much the only downside to this, I would say, is that you do get the occasional dry hit, but that's going to be with almost every tank, and no no adjustable airflow, but for me, that's not a problem, and I haven't had a dry hit yet. Normally, I'll get, <clears throat> normally, I can do like three or four vapes in a row, like chain vaping, and then I'll get like the third or fourth one will be a dry hit, but I mean... Haven't had any burnt taste yet, so... Yeah, great RTA. Definitely pick it up if you guys can. If you guys don't have that yet, it is amazing. It does run through juice a lot because, as you can see, it puts out a lot of vapor. Um, but, I mean, I guess that would be kind of another downside. But, I mean, that's because you're getting that, you know, dripper-type performance from this without having to drip every five seconds. That's what I love about this thing. Um, rebuilding is super easy. Uh, I mean, there's really not a whole lot negative I can say besides the airflow and the occasional dry hit, but I mean, the airflow is not a problem for a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people, there's going to be plenty of enough airflow. Unless you're going for cloud chasing, you're not going to use the tank anyways. So for most people, I would say 90% of people, that's going to be enough airflow. Um, yeah, so I mean, definitely check it out if you guys can. 
Uh, comment if you have any questions. Uh, comment if you guys want to say something else that I missed. Uh, give me tips for the video, whatever. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to. I would really appreciate that. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see y'all later.